We will never know for certain, but whatever it was, was purposeful. Do we know where the plane is, even today? No. Do we know what happened? No. If Pilot Sharp did kill all the passengers and did commit suicide in this way, he had uh, like five hours to think about it, which seems very unlikely to me. It ticks all the boxes. It was carefully planned. The month before the flight, he did the practice flight to the Southern Indian Ocean. As far as I'm concerned, I'm confident, 100% sure that the plane is not in the Southern Indian Ocean. This is my personal belief. I think that it was a hijack that went wrong. We have three electrical anomalies on an aircraft that in every other way flew fine. What it was definitely not was a failure in the aircraft systems. If you miss by an inch, you miss by a mile. You know, if, you, if you're close, it doesn't do you any good. There's uh, absolutely no evidence to prove any of these theories. Light MH370 ended in the southern Indian Ocean. By making that statement, he kicked off a theory that 10 years into the future we are still talking about. And it's nonsense. Ten years ago today, a Boeing 777 carrying 239 people from Malaysia to China on an overnight flight vanished from traffic control radar and was never seen again. To this day, there is still no universal consensus of what happened to the plane and its passengers. Extensive multinational searches in the southern Indian Ocean, where the jet is believed to have crashed, discovered nothing. Apart from some small fragments that later washed ashore, no bodies or wreckage have ever been found. Now, as the Malaysian government considers a new search for MH370, we look back at the 10-year open case now known as aviation's greatest mystery. Breaking news tonight, a Malaysia Airlines flight with 239 people on board, including four Americans, has gone missing. Now, the missing Malaysian Airlines jet appears to have been flying hundreds of miles off course, according to military officials. This is 24 times as large as the Air France search area, and that took two years to find the plane. Good night, Malaysian 370. The last words from the cockpit of the doomed flight, spoken by Captain Zahari Ahmad Shah. Today marks the 10th anniversary of the disappearance of flight MH370, yet the families of the 239 people on board still don't have closure on what happened to their loved ones. When I heard that the plane was missing, I said something must have gone wrong, you know? You don't immediately blame people, you don't blame the airline, you don't blame the airline, like that. You accept the fact that something has gone wrong. There have been so many theories, but the fact is there aren't any which have the weight of evidence to back any most part of what they have to claim. MH370 vanished from air control radar 39 minutes after leaving Kuala Lumpur en route to Beijing at 12.41 a.m. local time on March 8, 2014. The pilot sent a last radio call to Kuala Lumpur before leaving Malaysia, Good night, Malaysian 370, but failed to check in with air traffic controllers in Ho Chi Minh City when the plane crossed into Vietnam's airspace. Malaysian 370, contact Ho Chi Minh 120 decimal 9. Uh, good night. Uh, good night, Malaysian uh, 370. Minutes later, the plane's transponder, a communication system that transmits the plane's location to air traffic control, shuts down. The first call that it was was about 2.30 in the morning. They are all there on the screen, but MH370 flight to Beijing was not on the screen. Our immediate uh, concern at that time was to find out where the plane was at that time, not so much with uh, what happened. After three days of relentlessly searching the South China Sea, where the plane disappeared off of radar, nothing was found. Some days after the plane disappeared, Aviation experts made a breakthrough when they used satellite data combined with Malaysian military radar to map out a possible flight path of the missing aircraft. Data from the Inmar satellite company showed that MH370 had in fact made a U-turn across Malaysia as it transmitted hourly automatic signals known as pings 
Analysts then calculated that MH370 had flown south about an hour after it made this U-turn until it eventually ran out of fuel in the South Indian Ocean. This allowed aviation experts to plot out an area in the sea that the MH370 could have crashed into. Although this was a step forward in the search for the plane, the area in question was a vast 120,000 square mile corridor known for its aggressive storms. A subsequent 18-month search with the combined efforts of the Australian, Malaysian and Chinese governments was sadly unsuccessful in locating the wreckage. The search was called off in January 2017. Though the main wreckage of the plane has not yet been found, small pieces of debris have washed up on the shores of Madagascar and the surrounding areas, a lot of which have been identified as belonging to MH370. The aviation skill required to perform the U-turn that MH370 took has led theorists to argue that this change in flight path was no accident. This suggests that the plane was purposefully crashed by someone with a high level of aviation experience, placing the 53-year-old captain of the plane, Zahari Ahmad Shah, as the main suspect. The more people that give their theories about what happened to the Malaysian Airlines flight, the more confusing the case has become. Hundreds of articles, books, documentaries and news pieces have been produced on the subject and none have been able to conclusively prove what happened to the flight that seemingly vanished into thin air. Over the years there has been a plethora of theories offered up to explain MH370's disappearance, a mechanical failure, a terrorist hijacking, a murder-suicide plot and even that the plane was destroyed or confiscated by military. We will never know for certain. Um, but whatever it was, was purposeful. There was no malfunction. It was deliberately turned off. No debris found on the surface. When mm. a plane crashes, it produces millions of debris. The only um, clue here is that, that his, his marriage of 30 years was breaking up. But then a lot of people's marriages uh, break up. And, and uh, even if he was suicidal, it's, it's, it's a bit extreme to go and kill another 238 people uh, along with you. You know, there are dozens of theories out there about what happened, you know, and not, none of them can be proven unless the plane is found. Here we take a look at some of the most prominent theories that have surfaced online and in the media across the last decade. Christine Negroni, an American travel and aviation writer, believes she's debunked a lot of the theories. Everything at this point is speculation and some is more educated speculation than others. But obviously we don't know exactly what happened to that airplane. And so a lot of things deserve to be kept alive. A lot of things deserve to be quashed like a bug because they make no sense. And in, the, in this basket of, of theories that we have at this point, that's a mixed bag, a mixed bag of that could be, that's unlikely to be, and that's nonsense. On the plane being hijacked theory, we know that if the plane was hijacked, it was hijacked and ended up in the South Indian Ocean. So whether it was a hijacking that was foiled or a hijacking in which the person wanted to end up in the middle of the South Indian Ocean also makes you wonder, and to what end? To what end would that have happened? So it's possible. We get in this area when we get into hijackings, but you have to say that that was worth looking at. And my understanding from having been out at the in Kuala Lumpur at that time was that they did look into every passenger and the likelihood that there was a passenger on board who uh, who might have been up to no good. There's just not there a lot to support it, but certainly it had to be looked at. I think a theory that the pilot uh, took control of the aircraft and brought it to nefarious ends cannot be dismissed in its entirety, but it needs to be viewed from the point of view that there's no evidence to support it. There's no evidence that the captain or the first officer had any likelihood to commit this sort of thing. They were hired by the airline. There were you know, associates of theirs. No one indicated that they had an emotional or, or psychological problem. And so that knocks it out in terms of you know what's there to support the theory if the airplane was shot down it was shot down in the south indian ocean we know that because that's where the airplane is and we know that the airplane is in the south indian ocean because wreckage has been found so who shot it down somebody flying around the area that night where's the satellite uh, information from that or a boat 
Where's the satellite information from that? I have to assume I do not know, but there were military investigations and criminal investigations into who was in that area of the ocean at the time. That said, remember, nobody even knew the airplane was down there for at least a week. And so that could have given uh, military time to hide their, uh, their activity. But again, you do have to say, um, to what end? To what end would the military have been desirous of taking down that aircraft and which one? So mechanical failure also has a few has a few issues. One is we know this airplane flew fabulously. It flew every minute of its fuel load before it actually crashed into the South Indian Ocean. We know this. So it has to be whatever went wrong with that airplane has to be something that would have affected the flight without affecting the plane's ability to perform. Now that narrows down what went wrong on that airplane to a very small number of things. So for example, when we're talking about other theories, was there a cargo fire that caused everybody to become incapacitated or die from the fumes? A fire that could incapacitate or kill everyone on board and yet still not damage the aircraft in such a way that it prevented it from flying beautifully all the way till it ran out of fuel is unlikely. For the families who lost their loved ones 10 years ago, none of these theories mean anything until the main wreckage of the plane is found. Two husbands who lost their wives on MH370 both still feel they are without answers or closure. If I were to judge the investigation by the outcomes, uh, do we know where the plane is even today? No. Do we know what happened? No. Do we know who or what was responsible? No. So we're pretty much um, as poorly informed as uh, we were on the day the plane disappeared. So from that perspective, I suppose the investigation has not yielded very much. And yes, on we are still exactly where we were on day one. It is not just a matter of knowing what happened to my wife or the people on the boat. You know? It's what, why did this happen? Would it happen again? How would you be able to prevent it from happening again? It's been 10 years since the disappearance of Malaysian flight MH370. And even though there is doubt the plane will ever be found, hope might still be on the horizon. Last week, Prime Minister Anwar Ibrahim stated that Malaysia was willing to reopen an investigation if there was compelling new evidence. US-based robotics company Ocean Infinity recently submitted a new search operation proposal to the Malaysian government to find MH370 on a no-find, no-fee basis. In response, Malaysia's Transport Minister, Anthony Loki, said he was ready to meet Ocean Infinity to discuss a new search mission. So how confident do you have to be to offer your services free of charge if nothing is found? So can you really be this confident that after 10 years of no answers, there is still a reason to believe the plane can be found? Richard Godfrey, a retired aeronautical engineer, believes this can be done. The way in which, though, is through using technology known as WISPA, which stands for Weak Signal Propagation Reporter. WISPA can test the strength of radio frequencies, even up to every two minutes. Richard Godfrey says these radio signals can detect and track aircrafts over long distances, which can hone in on if there were any disturbances in the southern Indian Ocean when the plane supposedly crashed. If the disturbances are picked up, then it narrows down the final path the plane took and where it could have landed. The, the search, in my view, needs to be widened. When an aircraft passes through a radio signal, it disturbs that uh, radio signal, uh, either the signal level or the signal frequency. So it's, it's like a fisherman casting a huge net across the globe. And uh, when an aircraft passes through that net, it breaks uh, a small hole in, in the net and you can work out exactly where uh, that hole is. The advantage of the whisper data is you get uh, that data every two minutes. So it gives a much more accurate uh, flight path of MH370. Using Whisper, how close are you to finding kind of the exact spot of where the plane might be located? I'm down to a um, circle with a radius of 30 kilometres um, around a point uh, uh, 29.128 degrees south, 
99.934 degrees east. It's a point in the middle of the Indian Ocean, about 1,500 kilometres west of Perth in Australia. Do you think we will find MH370 with one more search? How certain are you that this will be in this spot if it does, if the search does go into that 30 kilometre radius? If uh, that 30 kilometre radius is searched, then I'm sure we will find it. Um, this is a much more precise definition of the crash, crash location and previous searches have done 120,000 square kilometres and there have been two searches of that size. So this is a much smaller. Meanwhile, technology has advanced enormously in underwater search, so we have a better technology with a more precise location. I'm, I'm very confident we will find MH370. And he's not the only one who thinks we need to search again. Australian aviation expert Captain Byron Bailey also believes we need another look. Ian Higgins, who wrote the book The Hunt for MH370, and I was involved with him in writing that book, he, he pointed out that Simon Hardy, your British Boeing 777 instructor pilot, flew out and briefed Ocean Infinity on where we think the aircraft was ditched, just south of latitude 39 south in the southern Indian Ocean. He was sure, Simon was sure, that they were going to search there, but what happened was suddenly they searched in the opposite direction and they went as far north as uh, latitude 26 south, which is miles and miles away, um, over a thousand miles away north from where we think the um, aircraft was ditched. So if Ocean Infinity are still willing to search in the area we said, which they originally wanted to do, they could knock it over in a matter of days. Despite the renewed confidence in another search, the MH370 debate rages on and some academics are doubtful that any more searches will help solve the mystery of MH370. I think you've got to bear in mind that MH370 went down in one of the world's biggest oceans and we didn't know exactly where it went down. Uh, the closest they had was an hour. An hour's flight time is a long period, so it could have gone down at any point in that hour. And that covers an area about the size of Northwest Europe. So when you start thinking about a plane going down to the ocean in a huge area, and of course, once it's hit the water and goes below the water, you're then trying to spot it through three or four, five kilometers of water. And so it's a very, very difficult task ahead. And I'm not surprised it wasn't found. I'm afraid to say it's one of those things that was never going to be found. But does he think this was a premeditated crash? We will never know for certain. Um, but whatever it was, was purposeful. Um, the transponder that was switched off, which gives the location and gives the tracking for the aircraft, was done on purpose. Um, there was no attempt at radio communication. The list goes on. And that was a very determined attempt to put the aircraft down in one of the more remote parts of the world, an area where you're not going to get uh, uh, much chance of finding it. As ever with MH370, the debate rages on. Though it seems like experts may be getting closer to working out the location of the wreckage, there are some people who doubt the wildly accepted view that the plane crashed into the southern Indian Ocean. We can't keep this story in the area of the mystery. It's not a mystery, it's a secret. It's not incredible, it is simply not credible. And what I said from the beginning, it's basically an insult to human intelligence to ask us to believe in 2014 that we have lost a B777 with 239 people in the most monitored region of the world which is either the South China Sea or the Malacca Strait, whether you, where you stop following the official narrative, but it's basically nonsensical and unacceptable. Although Florence's view is considered a controversial one by some, even the most confident scientists admit we can't really know what happened without finding the plane. So for now, it looks as if the search will have to continue. But what lessons have been learnt after 10 years of looking? And could we see MH370 happen again? The fact is that we still do not know exactly what happened to MH370. Therefore, we need to find the wreckage in order to recover 
uh, evidence like the flight data recorder would offer. Um, and once we found out why uh, and what happened, then we can start to learn the lessons uh, uh, out of the MH370 incident. Uh, at the moment, there's nothing to prevent such an event happening again. And uh, obviously the flying public, 10 million of us get on a plane every day, uh, and the aviation industry uh, need to resolve uh, what happened with MH370. And obviously the families of those on board need closure and have been waiting now 10 years. It's all in the news about this new search for the, air, for the aircraft, and that's fine, that's what they wanna do. But as far as I can see, a lot of money is being spent chasing after pieces of the airplane in an area where we don't know exactly where it is. And very little attention being spent right there in Malaysia, where so much evidence exists. What was the mechanical history of that airplane? What previous electrical anomalies were on that airplane? What happened when they took the pilot oxygen uh, containers out just prior to that flight and they were reinstalled? Because we know that's a mechanism for creating a problem for pilots' ability to use the emergency oxygen mask. That's just three. We haven't talked about the transponder. We haven't talked about the satellite. And we haven't talked about the cargo. And you don't need to find the airplane to start asking questions about those things. That's not being done. So before everybody throws money into looking for this airplane, they should throw a little money, and even more importantly, a little attention into the information that is already there. And if I were a family member, I would be livid at the fact that they're on this quixotic search for an airplane that may or may not be found and may or may not be illuminating, because there are answers. I think there's no doubt it went down the Indian Ocean. We know vaguely what area it went down in, but that area is huge. And this is the problem, you know, it's not just a needle in a haystack, it's a needle in a field of haystacks. They have the most robust system in the world for doing this. They're the ones responsible for finding uh, Shackleton's endurance. They're the ones who are responsible for finding the Argentinians to suffer. And I applaud them because, again, they're bringing the types of resources to the table. The, we have the ability, we have the knowledge. It's just the will of the government, the Australian government. Privately, I may have some thoughts about it, but I have absolutely no basis to uh, lay it out uh, with any confidence honestly, or with any evidence. The only evidence that the plane actually crashed in the Southern Indian Ocean, as we've been told for 10 years, would be to find, locate, identify, document the whole field of debris. That's a very important thing that people should keep in mind. I'm working on it, and um, I am hopeful that the truth will uh, appear soon. I don't think we will find the plane, but I think we will find the truth.